Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. The so last time we got all the way through the catacombs and, uh, you know, made a new friend called Patches. Nice dude. He's not underhanded or sleazy at all, but, you know, we left him alive because he can be useful to us later on. But anyway, now we're going to continue into the Tomb of the Giants proper. And, uh, the Tomb of the Giants introduces itself very well. Let's see, can we get a sunlight spear or a lightning spear on this guy? We can indeed. These things are, like, the worst. <laughs> These things are such a big pain in the ass to fight. Because they can, uh, they can pretty much one-shot you through your shield at full HP. They, oh, with that very attack, oh, but luckily most of it missed. You can see it coming from a mile away, but it's kind of hard to actually, like, respond to. <laughs> but those guys are going to be everywhere from now on. They're called Skeleton Beasts, I think, like, officially. And they are terrifying like the just the the models and the animations on them really good at being unsettling but also just really hard to kill let's see here there's gonna be a black knight coming at me is he, is he coming now yeah he is okay excellent I just want to bait that guy out it's really common for coming through there you see the skeleton beast and you're like okay I'm gonna kill this guy and then out of nowhere fucking black knight Oh, that was poorly timed. Oh, man. So was that. Okay, we're gonna stop trying to parry this guy, because we're obviously gonna die doing that. Let's get some Estus instead. I think this guy will also give us a white Titanite chunk. Oh, nope. Still can't parry. I guess I'm, like, thinking of them as or this guy as a Silver Knight, and he has different animations than that, so I gotta... Oh, my God. For real? We're gonna, we're gonna die because of this fucking archer, aren't we? We gotta get away from the archer. Okay, come on. Stop fucking with me, man. There you go. There's another hit. This guy should be dead after he gets up. Oh, wow. That didn't kill him. This will, though. No, it won't. Wow, he shielded that somehow and hit me at the same time. Okay. We lived. It was close. There's our white titanite chunk. And now I want to go back to the bonfire and heal, or, uh, and restore my Estus, because that was an unnecessary amount of damage. But I'm lost. I actually don't know how to get back there. I, yeah, I never come through this area backwards. I only know the way forward, so let's just go then. Maybe it was up that little path I was on. It didn't feel right, but perhaps it was right. Uh, we're going to have to kill this guy. Wait for the arrow to come, and then shoot. And then we'll try to lure him to such an area where we don't have to worry about arrow man. He's going to attack, and then we'll block it. He's going to jump back. Just Oh man, there's another big stamina eater. Oh man. Okay, he's dead. That's good. Now we can go and kill arrow man who is right across this little bridge here. And he's not going to be a big deal once we're this close to him. Oh, oh, wow. I've never actually seen this guy attack with anything other than an arrow. I didn't realize he could stomp on me. But he's dead now. We'll grab Soul of a Brave Warrior. We'll grab a Longbow. It seems very helpful, I guess. Heal up a little bit. And then try to come down past this skeleton beast. Oops. Oh, fuck. Okay, good. He didn't notice me. Super useful being able to get that big bunch of damage on him before he notices me. And we'll just try to take some pot shots at him. It's not gonna work. Don't fuck with me, man. God, I hate fighting these things so much. Just look at the damage. It's ridiculous. Oh, we're... Oh, okay, we lived. That was really, really close. Let's see if we can do a little plunging attack there. Okay, good. He is dead. I still, to this day, just get one shot by those guys all the time, so it's really nice that he is now dead. Let's see here. Around here somewhere. Nah, this is not the right way. That's where the effigy shield is, which is something we don't need at all. But around here somewhere, I think there's going to be another Titanite chunk drop. Maybe not. Come down here. Oh, there's another dude. I don't know if this guy actually has to see us, though, if we just hug this wall. Yeah, I think he's just gonna mind his own fucking business. Excellent. 
Down this way. Yeah, okay, here's the bonfire. Excellent. That's good to find. We're unfortunately all the way down to 15 Estus. And we can't get any more down here. We can't warp from that bonfire to something that we've already kindled. We could, like, spend three humanity to kindle it, but that seems like a little bit of a waste. This guy's not going to notice me. Uh-oh, he noticed me. I was going to say Izzy. It wasn't, like, asserting that as a matter of fact. But there's our white titanite chunk anyway. And... I'm scared. There he is. Okay. Fuck. It's weird using a weapon with such a wind-up. I don't really know what to do with myself a lot of the time. Oh, fuck! Okay, we're in trouble. This is officially trouble time. Teal up. Hmm. We're gonna lightning spear this guy, I guess, because I can't lock on to the dog. There we go, he's dead. The dog's stuck in this little dance. It's good news for us. He's dead too. Excellent. And there should actually be, now that we've gotten that Titanite chunk, like a really easy way to leave the bonfire to get where we're going. But, fuck if I remember what it is. Is this? Yeah, this is totally safe. And then we want to come over here, and uh-oh. Oh shit, those guys aren't supposed to notice us. I, I was not hugging the wall hard enough, but I think if we just run for it, they're going to forget that we exist. Hop down here, or at least not be able to follow us. They're pretty big. But anyway, here we are, finally out of the darkness. We're near Gravelord Nito's hideaway. And we'll see if we can beat him on the first try. Uh, oh. There's a crystal lizard. Um, oh, there's a there's an NPC summon coming. Or not summon, but a thing. I can't hit this crystal lizard! Wow. That is absolutely infuriating. Fucking scythe, man. It's fun. I like it. But it's a little bit annoying sometimes. I think this guy uses the grant, which a lot of people were telling me has really good faith scaling. Ooh, that was scary. Um has really good face scaling, but it also requires 50 strength, so it was a little bit outside the realm of this let's play, because I would have to level, like power level basically to get there. He's going to heal himself. Oh, he's going to fall. We're not going to get his drop, I think that means. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> I think that was the grant, and that would mean, that would uh, be a very sad time if I had been planning on using the grant this playthrough, because I would not be able to get it there's no way to get that guy back. Though I guess I would have been a lot more careful not to find him on an edge if that was the case. Hopefully, anyway. Though it's kind of hard to find a place without edges here, isn't it? So anyway, here's more of these things. Oh, am I still using the fucking Covetous Gold Serpent Ring? I think I am. That also might be good because we need to get Titanite chunks from these guys if at all possible. Let's touch this blood stain. It's always fun seeing what happens to people. This guy is wearing the grant, it looks like. You can come down here. He's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Falls off the edge. I wonder what that was about. Maybe he was fighting Leroy. That didn't actually look like the Grant from the side. Maybe it was like a two-handed sword or something. It's hard to tell. Ooh. That was a little bit too close to that guy. Um, where are these arrows coming from? Oh, shit. I didn't see any of, like, they're coming from that way. I didn't see them actually coming at me. I just saw them hit me. I wonder if looking back at the video I'll actually be able to see them. I'm just surprised that the guy shooting them is close enough to uh, to actually be able to attack me, because he seems pretty far away. Uh, let's use some great lightning spears here. Normally I would just run through this area, but again, I'm really trying to get these, uh, these white titanite chunks. You know what, let's just lightning spear this guy down as well. I don't think I really need lightning spears for... Uh, for Nito. It's not really part of my strategy. So I don't feel too bad about it. There's a man hiding around a corner here. This is like a whole big ambush if you're uh, if you're meleeing. Because you come over here and then a bone tower is going to pop out of the ground somewhere. Maybe I already killed it. Maybe that was the one I killed with lightning. Yeah, usually there's a, there's a little bit of an ambush going on, but it's no big deal as long as you keep running. How do I have 53,000 souls? Fuck, maybe I should just 
homeward boner back to, <laughs> to uh, use those. Anyway, here's a soul of a hero. Around here somewhere, there is also a... Oh god, the skeleton babies! These things are so fucking terrifying. They all individually inflict bleed, so it's really easy to get bled out by these guys if you're not careful. They're also a great source of humanity drops. But we should just run from them. These pinwheels can also drop uh, white titanite chunks, as well as white titanite slabs very rarely. And if we got one, that would be awesome, because we could feed it to Framps. And then, oh my god. Oh, it's a mask of the child! That's the mask I've wanted. That's awesome, too. I didn't even know these guys could drop masks. Usually I just go and buy one from Patches, but you have to beat Gravelord Nito before you can do that. So that's pretty cool. There's another drop, hopefully... White Titanite? Another mask of the child, alright. <laughs> Fuck you. I don't know why I'm bothering to kill all these guys. I'm pretty sure they're infinitely respawning. Yeah, they definitely seem to be. Let's get out of there. Well, actually, hang on. There's definitely a white Titanite chunk drop around here somewhere. And where is it? Hmm. Is it down? Maybe it's up. Might be up. Hmm. Anyway, here's some more pinwheels. These guys just as easy as the boss version. In fact, a little bit easier. In fact, it would actually maybe make the boss hard if you had to fight this many of him at once. <laughs> Just like fight a room full of pinwheels and then he would be a challenge at this point in the game. People sometimes run through the catacombs really fast and kill him at level 1. Or not necessarily level 1, but kill him before leveling at all. Just like the first thing they do in Dark Souls, come down and kill pinwheels so they can have the right of kindling. Because he is uh, easy enough that he's not really challenging to kill even at uh, such a low level. Really weird. Uh, there's a humanity? No? I could have fucking sworn maybe the corpse fell through the ground. That happens sometimes. Um, but here's our white titanite chunk? Yes, it is. Alright, excellent. So we've got that. We haven't gotten a single white titanite chunk drop this entire run through, so. That might be a little bit of an issue, and I might farm a little bit off camera. It doesn't take too long to get some white titanite chunks. Depends on how far off we are and how sad about it I am. But if we come down here, then we'll be able to get a white titanite slab, which uh, will allow us to ascend our weapon all the way to plus five occult. If we end up getting to plus four with or getting enough chunks to get to plus four, that is. All right. Anyway, let's grab this one last soul of a brave hero. Soul of a hero. That was close. And now come into Nido Land. We're going to want to definitely heal up. We're on this weird, like, bacon floor. Nido, you know, say what you will about him. He's got good taste in food slash floor decoration. And we're also going to want to put on... Mmm, actually we're not. We want the Great Scython. I was going to use Sunlight Blade. It's a tough call because we definitely want a Divine Weapon to kill the dudes with. Like, the um, there's skeletons in here. We also, we're probably going to want a Silver Knight Shield. We're definitely going to want a Mask of the Child on for some extra regen. And we're going to want Havel's Ring on so we can roll. And let's do it. This dude's design is pretty funny. He's literally just a skeleton made of skeletons. Why not? So anyway, here's Nito. And this is a weird boss fight. It always I never quite know what to expect from it, because sometimes he just does these unavoidable fucking attacks that will subject you to toxic, and it really sucks. And yeah, that one right there. And uh, there's really nothing you can do about it, as far as I can tell. Like, I've never figured out a way to dodge it. And normally those skeletons also respawn, which makes them a little bit more of a pain in the ass. But, you know, we've got a divine weapon, so we don't have to worry about that. 
Yeah, as long as you can get him to engage with you in melee combat like this, he's not very bad at all. Though he's going to do a big ass attack right now. We'll just back up, no big deal. Yeah, see, there it is. That, that like, he screams and then a thing comes out of the ground. And I really don't think there's a way to dodge it. Hmm, we shouldn't be here. I don't know if it's better to, like, attack him during that or what. Probably is. That's not a whole ton of damage. Yeah, maybe. Ah, uh, well, here comes. Yep. <laughs> there's that. Let's go ahead and put on... Oops, not Scimitar. Longsword. Let's use some Sunlight Blade here. That was clumsier than it needed to be for sure. That's okay. And then we can tear at him a little bit. Now that these skeletons are dead, we don't have to worry so much about it. Let's just hit him <laughs> rather than try to run because I was pretty sure I was too close to him anyway. And I think we got this. But again, every once in a while he'll just really surprise me with his ability to bullshit, basically. <laughs> Let's see if that's the case this time. But Sunlight Blade, again, just tearing him up. It's really good. This is like the spell that makes it worthwhile to do a Faith character. You can just tear bosses apart with it. How did so many of those attacks miss? What was that? There it goes again. What the f... I'll just not lock on, then. Go block that, and he should be dead very shortly. Oh, we're out of sunlight. Let's put on a Divine Great Scythe really quick. And we should be able to kill him in just a couple more hits. Three more. There we go. Easy peasy. Like I said, some usually pretty easy. Every once in a while it's just like, he'll just totally fuck with me. There we go. Gravelord Nito gone. We got another Lord Soul. That's two down, two more to go. Uh, next up, we will probably go and hang out with the Four Kings. But for right now, let's go ahead and use this handy dandy bonfire. Level up a million times because we have a ton of souls now. Yep, perfect. And let's warp out to see... Our good friend Andre of Astora, who we left the Dark Ember with, because he will be able to upgrade our weapon for us. And then we'll see how high we can get it with the chunks we got. We got every, like, guaranteed chunk drop, but none of the, like, optional ones, or, you know, the non-guaranteed, the luck-based ones. So, let's modify equipment. We'll ascend this into an Occult Great Scythe. Excellent. And now we can reinforce it, use these white titanite chunks, probably not very high. Yeah, wow. Only to plus two, and we're not going to get any more white titanite in the okay, entire game. Shall. So I think I will end up farming some white titanite, because that is a really unfortunately low level weapon to try to beat the whole game with. Uh, but I'll probably do that... Hmm. No, I'll do that right now. So I'll... Leave this as part one of this episode, and then afterwards we'll probably head on to the uh, New Londo Ruins to do the, um, what am I thinking? The Four Kings, the next boss on our list. So I'll see you guys then. And we're back. So I uh, actually ended up just getting the full five that I needed to fully upgrade my weapon because it was so easy to get these Titanite, char or, uh, titanite chunks. I really didn't expect to be able to farm them so quickly. You might notice I'm not human anymore, that's because on the very last run, like, I had the, all of the Titanite I needed. Coming back to the bonfire, a little too excited to get back to the bonfire. Like, jumped off the cliff to go back to the bonfire, in such a way that I landed next to the bonfire, and then slipped off the fucking cliff into the abyss. So, there goes my humanity, but that's okay. We're going to reinforce our weapon all the way up to plus five, because we will use all those Titanite chunks, and now our white Titanite slab to get an Occult Great Scythe plus five. Achievement unlocked, Occult Weapon, excellent. And that is the best uh, Great Scythe we can possibly have for our build, you know, tied, I guess, for a, with a plus 10 Divine. 
I was just thinking, okay, we need two more large Titanite shards to get our longsword up to plus 10. It's definitely something we should think about because we also want to uh, eventually get it up to plus 15, and we're about to find the uh, the very large ember where we're going next, which would allow us to get that. But anyway, let's go to Firelink for the time being. Not super important. Uh, by the way, I have my longsword out because I was using Sunlight Blade to farm those bone pillars, which I guess is probably part of why it was so fast. It was super easy to kill the things. It was just walking back, basically. Let's get all of our equipment sorted out. Uh, Havel's Ring, excellent. And one more thing. Let's access the bottomless box and get rid of some of these excess weapons that we've accumulated because they're starting to get in my way. A little bit. Oh yeah, and one more thing. We want to go to patches so that we can get some new talismans, which are going to be great. Uh, Isolith Catalyst is unnecessary. Uh, Skull Lantern, unnecessary. I think that's everything. And let's see if that dude is here. Hopefully he is. Because he's going to sell some canvas talismans, which are actually the like default equipment for the dude, uh, the uh, cleric, but we didn't start Ooh, as one. The game. How many of you are there? You've come at the perfect time. I'm done with the looting. I'm a humble merchant now. And wondrous treasures have I. At a special price for you. There you are. Have a nice look at them. Oh, relax. No more funny business out of me, my friend. So we're going to purchase some stuff from this guy. Uh, he has... Uh, he has heal and great heal expert. I was hoping he had homeward as well, but I guess not. And these canvas talismans, now that we have a pretty decent um, faith, are going to be better than the Thorlund talisman. And like I said, he also sells all of these. Mask of the Mother. That is not a very attractive woman. That's supposed to be a mother. I never actually looked at that mask before. <laughs> it's a weird looking thing. There's some cleric armor, but uh, yeah, nothing too important to pick up from him. Right. But the main Good thing stuff, eh? is that now we have these talismans that we'll switch out for, and those will have better magic adjust than any other talisman for us. There's also, I think if we got our faith even higher than the dark... Dark Moon Talisman would be better, but we kind of killed the god that that coven is based on, so I don't think they would be too excited about giving us that. I don't think there's any way for us to get that at that point. At this point, um, access bottomless box. And anyway, we're not gonna level faith anymore, regardless. So we're all good. Get rid of the Thorland and the normal talisman, and just have du dual wielding canvas talismans, like a fucking badass. Look at this. We're so fucking faithful. Yeah, 420 praise it, man. Anyway, <clears throat> we're going to head down now to New Londo and try to get into the like lower New Londo. If you remember, this is the area full of ghosts that we went to right away in uh, the very first episode of this playthrough. There were a whole bunch of ghosts. We ran across a bridge, got a um, Firekeeper soul, and then promptly died. And we never went back there, and that's because there's never been a need to go back there until now. Wait a minute! I need to fight Sif. Hmm. I kind of want to get the very large ember before that, though. So let's do that. But we're not going to be able to fight the four kings until we do fight Sif, because we need a ring from that. And that's going to be in Dark Moon or Dark Root Garden. I do this every single time. I'm like, what could I possibly be forgetting before going to New Londo? And then I, I'm about to go and fight the Four Kings. I'm like, oh yeah, I do not have any means of getting into the Abyss. So let's uh, equip... Where did they go? I didn't use my Transient Curses, did I? No, here they are. Excellent, we'll get rid of that. Um... So anyway, these ghosts, I was talking about in the very first episode how you cannot damage them unless you yourself are cursed. Transient Curse is a little way around that. lets you mimic a curse without having to worry about the halved HP that that entails. So we'll use the Transient Curse. And that's going to last for about five minutes of ghost slaying action for us. Oh, we can one-shot these things. That's really good. That's really good. Man, and people said the occult great scythe was bad. We're one-shotting ghosts, man. One-shotting them. 
This is pretty sweet. I've never had an occult weapon before. I'm excited to try it out. Well, that's not true. I've had an occult club many times because that's a drop in an Orlando, but I've never used it because, you know, for obvious reasons, it's a fucking club. So it's not, not as good as one might hope. You know, it is a high quality weapon, but it's not, the base weapon itself is pretty bad. Oh, don't grab me, bro. We just need to back up from this. Oh. Hopefully without falling into the abyss. This area is a total trap. You're like, you've used a transient curse. You're like, okay, I'm using this super rare item that allows me to fight these ghosts. Better be quick. You know, just run through here, kill all the ghosts, and then you run in there. And suddenly you're absolutely surrounded by ghosts. And then they corner fuck you, and it's really bad. But if you just hang back, a little bit cautious, then you're totally fine. I'm keeping an eye out for drops, because these guys do drop more transient souls, which we may need. Depending on, you know, how horrible this I end up being. We could also buy more from the ad undead merchant, but it's much more convenient to just be able to grab them. There's a parrying dagger for us if we wanted that. That's a shield that uh, doesn't really shield very well, but allows you to parry very easily by giving you a very large parry window. I've never actually used it before. Seems like it would be fun. I'm just doing a parrying build. But the problem is there are a lot of enemies that cannot be parried. And in that case, you just have, like, no shield, which is, you know, not the best. There's a banshee over here. She's apparently holding a baby. I never knew that until somebody pointed it out to me. But it's a little hard to tell with the ghosts. They are transient, and then you kill them, and then they aren't even there anymore. But anyway, so New Londo is this area where... Oh, wait. We definitely want to open up this shortcut. Let's do that. There we go. Kick the ladder. New Londo is an area that used to be a human city, a pretty bustling one. And then something horrible happened. The abyss kind of consumed the area and started doing horrible things. And then the sealers, who are like some kind of group, I'm not really totally 100% sure what their deal is, but I know that they are the ones responsible for deciding to flood the area to, uh, to keep all of the evil down there. And these ghosts are the remains of the people who were overtaken by the abyss and then drowned by the sealers. So they, they had a bad time. Oh man, come on. There we go. We're probably going to run out of uh, curse pretty soon. Hopefully that doesn't happen at the worst possible moment. Let's give ourselves some healing. Excellent, but it's really nice being able to one-shot these ghosts. As I don't think that's ever been the case for me coming through New Londo before. I guess, though, I usually do it sooner so I can talk to Koth and place the Lord Vessel with him instead of Framp. But in this case, totally unnecessary because we are not planning on doing any invading. There's a Transient Curse. Excellent. Or two Transient Curses, I think that was. So that will allow us another ten minutes of ghost-killing action. Apparently there's a ghost, like, oh my god, stop it, man. Stop it, there's a ghost like inside the chimney that's fucking with me. That's okay, and here's a sealer. Hello, sir. Well, this is a surprise. I get few visitors, save for ghosts. You have the Lord Vessel. Very impressive. I know exactly what your intentions are. You seek the four kings whom I guard over. This is the key to the seal. The four kings slumber in the deepest chamber of the ruins. Use this key to break the seal and open the floodgates. Oh, and do not forget, the dark wraiths reside in a dark void called the Abyss. But the Abyss is no place for ordinary mortals. For lo, long ago, the knight Artorius traversed the Abyss. If you can find him, and learn from him. The abyss may prove surmountable. Alright, so that guy gave us the hint we need to know that we need to go to Artorius's grave before we can actually fight the four kings. Because if we try to go in there without a certain ring that we can get from his grave, we will instead just... Uh oh there goes our transient curse. Let's go ahead and refresh that. Um... 
shit, what was I just saying? If we if we don't have that ring, we just fall to our death when we try to go and fight the four kings. So we'll have to do that first, but we can, before that, go ahead and use this key to the seal to unflood Nulando Ruins. And uh, find out what's down there, basically. The area has been flooded for, I believe it's supposed to have been hundreds of years. There's some more transient curses. For nope, Jagged Ghost Blade. That's going to actually allow us to attack ghosts without being cursed. But it has a substantial drawback of only allowing us to attack ghosts. We can't interact them with them in any other way of our choosing. Which means that when, uh, when we try to shield them, nothing would, would happen. So it's still to our benefit to use transient curses to fight. It's also not the greatest weapon of all time. But anyway, I think this is the seal. We'll go ahead and open this gate. Yes, it is. Excellent. And there we go. Seal broken. New Londo unflooded. And we'll be able to go down there and see the uh, the area that was so evil that it was flooded to keep the abyss from breaking out. Let's see here. I guess we'll want to call this elevator. But the first thing we're going to do is simply find the... Go elevator find the very large ember down here and then we'll probably call it an episode go and upgrade our uh, longsword as highly as we can and then uh, and then come back down here or we'll then go and get the ring that we need and then come back down here to fight the four kings I had totally forgotten that we had some other stuff to uh, to accomplish before we fought the four kings down here but it's probably good to upgrade our longsword all the way anyway because we'll definitely be using Sunlight Blade to fight the four kings. And they are basically a DPS test more than anything else. Like, the the slower you kill them, the more difficult they get. So this guy is called a Dark Wraith. And he... You know what? Just in case I need more Titanite chunks than we have, I should definitely put on the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring again. Because these guys are the most efficient way to farm normal Titanite chunks. Um, which is what we need to make our longsword plus 15... But anyway, these guys are called Dark Wraiths. They are dudes who are part of a covenant that basically just involves running around and going into other people's worlds and devouring their humanity. Um, if you join the Dark Wraiths, you get a web, uh, you get an item called a Red Eye um, Red Eye Orb, and that lets you go to just search for another person's world, basically similar to uh, to being summoned, but instead you do it against their will. And anybody who's human, you can just go to their world, and if you kill them, you get their humanity. If they kill you, then you don't lose anything, actually, which is really weird. You have to be human to invade, but you don't lose your humanity when you lose an invasion, which I think is really stupid. Because if they kill you, they get a humanity, and I feel like it should just be like a, you both gamble one humanity, and whoever loses, loses their humanity. But uh, the invaders don't have to risk anything, which makes it very overpowered to run around invading people. Oh, giant blob. I'm not sure what the deal with these guys are, if there's any lore behind them. They're just big dudes who melt weapons. They got big faces. Really big faces. But they're not particularly difficult. They're also vulnerable to bleed damage, which is great for us, because we are using a scythe to get away from the exploding heads, which are also live down here. And kill this guy. Yeah, these guys, not super hard, as you can see, and they do drop Titanite chunks at a great frequency. The big thing to watch out for is that they have a special attack where they pull out a Dark Hand and try to suck your humani humanity out. And it's really, like, telegraphed and easy to dodge, but if you happen to get hit by it, they will take away whatever humanity you have. Or maybe just one of it? I'm not sure if they take all of your humanity, but if I got hit by it right now, I would definitely lose my one humanity, and I would not get it back when I killed them. So who knows where it would have went. But what am I doing here? Ah, yes. I knew there was something to look out for in here. Come on, man. You think I can't see you? There we go. Man, I'm doing a shit ton of damage with this Occult Great Scythe. This is, like, unprecedented for me. My, uh, the, um, 
Divine Uchi Katana plus 10 that I used on my last faith build was nowhere near this powerful. Where? There's a way to go up and I can't find it. I must be being really stupid here. I thought it was over here. Oh yeah, I'm being really stupid. Wait a minute. No, that's the elevator I came down in. No, it isn't. Wait a minute. Do we ride this up? Is that? I thought there was a staircase somewhere. Is it, no, this has got to be it though. Yeah, alright. Here we are on the upper level. And by the way, there's no ghosts down here. Ghosts don't like to hang out in the uh, the flooded area of New Londo, which is really nice. Because that means we don't have to stay transient cursed. But, oh, this is totally out though. This is... This is upstairs. We've just killed all the ghosts here. So how the fuck do we get upstairs? I'm really baffled at this point. Like, I've... I've got to be missing something so obvious. No, that's just a lever. Here's like a miracle focus that I guess will make my heal better if I want to use it. You know, might as well. I'm not sure exactly how much that improves my miracle, but why not? Use it. That, that those go down sometimes when somebody else uses a miracle in their game. I think. Not totally sure. All right, where the fuck are the stairs? We've got to get... There's definitely a way upstairs. Maybe it's not in this area at all. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Maybe we have to come out here. This doesn't seem right, though. Hmm. Oh, we can fight another one of these assholes. <clears throat> wow. I just walked into his sword and took damage from it. I just wandered into the point of his sword. There we go. No more tight night chunks for me. Large soul of a proud knight, very nice. And yeah, that's toward the boss, so we don't want to go there yet. There's no real reason for it. So maybe we have to go over this way? No, that's just death if we jump in that water. It's got to be there's just a staircase here that I'm too blind to see. This is this is really weird and I'm so sorry. What am I doing? Here it is. Right? Yes. Okay, here's the fucking staircase. I just couldn't see it because it's dark here and I'm scared. But anyway, now we're in the upstairs area and we can just wander around at our leisure and pick up all of the nice drops up here. And then after this, I guess we will go and tackle the um, the like thing before the boss. Because those big blob monsters, we already fought one. Those do not respawn, and there's one right on the way to the boss. So it would be beneficial for us to take that out, I guess, before we actually want to go and fight the boss. So the way can be a little bit more clear. Let's see. I thought there was something over there, but there's totally not. I wonder what the purpose of that area is. Just to throw people off, I guess. Come up here. And here it is. The very large ember. That's going to allow plus 15 ascension for our longsword, which will make it a really awesome weapon to use sunlight blade with. And now we'll just climb back down, I guess. Um, go ahead and S this up just in case this is a longer fall than it looks like, but now nah, we're totally good. And we'll just go and fi finish off this area. This is the wrong way. That's the way we came in. The four kings are over this way, and we will actually have to curse up one more time. There's one more set of ghosts hanging out in this area that we'll want to be able to kill. So let's transient curse it up. But this is probably in all likelihood the last transient curse we're going to use in this entire playthrough because there's nothing else waiting for us upstairs. We want to bait out that giant blob man, and hopefully some ghosts as well. Well, here's this guy at least. All oh, right. <clears throat> Forgot that this move set does not include like a lunging attack with the R2. Oh, here's some cracked red eye orbs. So we might do a little bit of invading if I like can, but th my net net code has been bad enough that probably won't. The cracked red eye orbs are like the red eye orb exactly, but they. Um, Whoa. 
the red eye orb is infinite and the cracked red eye orbs you could only invade once per cracked red eye orb so you want to be maybe a little bit more judicious with your use of them let's kill this guy just try to get as many titanite chunks as we can while we're down here basically and then we'll fight these guys one more time on our way to the boss and hopefully that'll be enough to just plus 15 the long sword we're also going to need some titanite shards which we'll probably pick up next time the shop in An Orlando to get them from is now blocked by some angry NPCs because we killed Guinevere. So we'll have to fight them and stuff. So it would be a little bit of a longer thing. So that should be like start of next episode probably. We'll warp to Chamber of the Princess and do that. But anyway, that is the end of New Londo Ruins. That's where the four kings are, but again, we can't go there without a special ring. So we're just going to homeward boner away. And next time... It'll be time to go grab some large shards, and then kill Sif, and then uh, kill the four kings, I think. And we can probably fit that all into one episode, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.